first of all want to thank you, parents, for allowing me this opportunity to speak to your children. But before I go to them, I first of all just want to chat to you. And I want to say to you, you are absolute heroes. I think this was such a difficult time for all of us as parents. We, I think most of us had these great ideas of how we're going to teach our children and how we're going to do nice things at home. And then that first week went by and all of a sudden everything falls apart and you scream and the kids doesn't want to do what you want them to do. And you have to maybe work or you don't have work and there's just tension in the house and everything is just a mess. And sometimes when it feels like that, we as parents think, Oh my goodness, how am I ever going to get through this? Guys, and it's over 100 days later, and we're still there. And I just want to say, there was one verse that through this whole process just kept me going. And I want to read it to you guys and just share it with you because it's such a special verse for me, especially for us as parents during this time. And I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. I'm going to read Romans 8 verse 28. It's a very well-known verse. And I just want to read it to you and just encourage you guys. Let's keep on. Let's carry on in this difficult time as parents and let's rejoice with our children. Romans 8 verse 28. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about our causes, all things to work together as a plan for good for those of us that loves God. He sees he's deeply concerned with us. He sees in his word that he's got a plan of good for us. Even in this time, even with us and our children, and even if it feels like we're never going to get a relationship back again, or we're never going to get to any sort of normalcy, normalcy. I know God has got a plan for us. And I just want us as parents to stand strong for that. Um, thank you very much for this time. And you're welcome to sit and listen with your children ar around this. It's going to be a very quick session around lions. Um, I'm excited to talk to the kids. So can I ask that you give your phones or your laptops or your tablets to your kids so that I can start speaking to them? Kids, it's a great time to be with you today. I'm so excited. I'm very grateful to talk to you again. It is strange. My boy said to me the other day, Mom, what about the kids at the back? That was always naughty. So I'm going to talk to you now and say, Guys, you kids at the back, yeah, you must listen, please. And your quiet ones, the quiet ones that sat in front with me, Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for all of the children that's going to join me today. And I'm excited to share with you what's on my heart. And I believe what was on God's heart for us today. But let's start with a prayer. Thank you, for, thank you, Lord, for having this time. Thank you that you bless us with all the blessings that we need. And thank you for this time that we can share with your word and that we can learn from your word and how it is to face our lions so that we can be strong and that so that we can be mighty because of you. We love you, Lord, because you loved us first. I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've never seen a lion up front, face to face, without a wall between us or without a fence between us. I've been in the wild for a while, but I've never seen a lion just like that. I'm too scared. I think I will wet my pants. But don't tell anybody, please. I've seen lions in the zoo. And that's the only time when I... Maybe you guys have seen a lion. Maybe you have an experience of a lion that you came face to face with. I think that would have been very scary. When I was in the zoo, there was this lion walking up and down. And up and down next to the fence. And I was very scared. Because you could see in that lion's face. He knew. I was lunch. And I knew I can be lunch. Luckily, there was a fence between us. So I knew he couldn't actually eat me. But it was very scary to face a lion. I think sometimes it's scary for us as well to look at the lions in our lives and to face them. In these difficult times, there are a lot of lions that I can think about. The lion of coronavirus. It's a massive lion for all of us. If you went to school already, you might be scared of other kids that get coronavirus. If you're still waiting to get to school, you might have a line in your heart to say, I don't know how school is going to be. What do we do? How do we act? How do we do? What do we do? How do we train? For those of you that's still waiting, that's schooling at home, there might be a line that says, oh, I can't understand this work. How do I get, how do I understand maths? I don't understand it. So all of us has got lines in our lives. We even have normal lions in our lives. Sometimes we have a lion of not having a friend. 
and it scares us. And we're scared that we're never going to get a friend. Or we're scared that mom and dad might not be there. So there's a lot of lines in our lives. And I want to share the story. And it's such a well-known story for all of us. But I want to give a different twist on the story about Daniel. Um, and Daniel also had to face some lions. Those of you that doesn't know Daniel, let me quickly just explain to you. Daniel and his friends was in a foreign land. And they decided that they're going to obey God no matter what. And they started a diet where the other young men of that world ate meat and they ate vegetables and they drank beer. Daniel and his friends said, no, we're just going to eat fruit. And you know what? God blessed them. And he made them strong and he made them the best warriors. So much so that Daniel and his friends started working for the king. And it was amazing because there wasn't normally in that age people that worked for the king that wasn't part of the king's heritage. But these people came from, they were foreigners, they came into the country and they actually started working for the king. And Daniel and his friends was loved by a lot of people, even by the king. What unfortunately happened was there were people that didn't like them. And then his friends was thrown into a furnace, into a fire pit. But you know what? God had grace on them and God protected them. And the king was absolutely amazed. And the king actually realized who God is. And then he started, Daniel started listening to the king's dreams and he could tell the king what it meant because God gave him that word. So Daniel was a well-known person in that kingdom. And he was faithful to God. And he loved God and he prayed to God daily. And it was such an amazing time. But unfortunately, with all things, the king passed away and the new king came in. And that was King Darius. And that king didn't really know about all the good things that Daniel did and all the good things that God did through Daniel. What he did is he listened to his advisors and his advisors didn't like Daniel. And he said to the, his advisor said to him, you know, King Darius, I think we should proclaim a law that you are the only one that can be worshipped, that you are the king. Everybody in the land must worship you. And Darius thought, mm, I'm the king. I think that would be wonderful. And he declared that law. And so these people that didn't like Daniel, they were very happy. Because all of a sudden, they had something that they could get Daniel with. They went to Daniel's home and they saw him. Daniel was faithful to God. He went every day, three times a day, and he prayed to God with his windows open so that everybody could see it. And these people looked at him and said, mm, Daniel is not worshipping King Darius. Daniel is worshipping God. We're going to tell the king. And they rushed off to the king and they told the king and all of a sudden the king was in trouble because he actually liked Darius. He actually liked Daniel, but he couldn't say no because he made a law and that law said everybody should worship him. And now Daniel didn't worship him and now there's a problem. And the king said, he will go and speak to Daniel. And I want to read the story to you in Daniel 6. I want to read Daniel 6 from verse 16 to verse 23. And I'm going to read it to you through the message version. So that it reads to us like a story, like what we normally do in church. And I'm going to start. So the king went to, the king went to Daniel. And they had to give, and they had to bring Daniel to the lion's den. Because that was the, that was what the law said. If you didn't obey, if you didn't worship the king, you're going to be thrown into the lion's den. But the king said to Daniel, your God, to whom you are so loyal, is going to get you out of this. How amazing is that? Even the king knew who God was. A stone slab was placed over the opening of the den. The king sealed the cover with his signet ring and the rings of all his nobles, fixing Daniel's fate. So where's Daniel now? He's in a lion's den with a rock that was sealed off that nobody can open. And he had to face his lions. And these lions were hungry. I can tell you that. Let's read on and see what happened to the story. The king then went back to his palace. He refused supper. He couldn't sleep. He spent the night fasting. At daybreak, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. 
As he approached the den, he called out anxiously, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve so loyally, saved you from the lions? O king, live forever, Daniel said. My God sent his angel, who closed the mouths of the lions, so that they would not hurt me. I've been found innocent before God and also before you. O king, I've done nothing to harm you. When the king heard these words, he was happy. He ordered Daniel take it up out of the den. When he was hauled up, there wasn't a scratch on him. He had trusted in God. Then the king commanded that the conspirators who has informed on Daniel been thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and their children, before they hit the floor. So before they were in the lion's den, the lion's had them in their jaws, tearing them to pieces. So those lions were hungry, but God saved Daniel. He saved Daniel from the lion's den and he, because Daniel was faithful. And I just want to share a few things on what can we today do to make sure that if we face our lions, that we can stand as strong as Daniel. I think the first thing for me today is that we have to trust in God and we have to keep close to God, guys, how do we do that? There's three things that I can remind ourselves of and that we know because we've taught it already. The first is, let's read our Bibles. If you don't have a Bible, please come and tell us. We can share with you a Bible. We can give you one. Or you can just re recite the words, some of the verses that we've learned. You don't have to have a Bible, but you can ask mom or dad. They will have a Bible. And then you start reading the Word of God because then you can understand who God is. We also have to sing praise and worship songs. We have to start singing to the Lord when we're in the shower, when we're playing games, when we do the laundry, when we do our homework. Let's just start singing praise and worship songs. Let's put music on that we can proclaim who God is so that we can fill it with his presence and with his, um, and with his honor in our hearts. And then the last thing that I think we need to do is we need to pray. Daniel prayed three times a day. Let's start with daily. Let's start with every day. I want to challenge you, maybe just in the mornings. Let's in the mornings pray. Five minutes, two minutes, one minute, just say one sentence. Let's just pray to God and say we're thankful for something and we're grateful that he's in our lives. So that's the first thing. Let's just get close to God. The, th the second thing that Daniel did is he didn't turn on the king. The king made a rule that you have to worship the king. That was against everything that Daniel stood but he didn't complain. He didn't get angry. He wasn't rude. He just said, I'm going to go on and do what God expects from me. And I think that's what God is asking us today as well. Let's just go on. Let's not get mad, kids. Let's not get angry because one of your friends didn't like you. And now there's a line of no friends in front of you. Let's not do that. Let's just stand up and say, God wants us to be with him, to be faithful to him. And let's not be angry at the people that gives us these lions because those people might not even know that it's a lion in our lives. And the last thing I think that we need to understand is Daniel actually faced his lions, eh? He didn't run away. When he heard there's this law, he didn't run away to a different country and he didn't go there and he didn't then say, okay, now I'll secretly do this. Nobody's going to catch me. I don't want to face my lions. He prayed every day. He got caught and he faced his lions. And we must be as bold as Daniel because Daniel was bold because God was with him and God is with us today. So I think let's remember, we have to be bold. But to be bold, we have to know who Jesus is. We need to know who God is. So let's pray. Let's sing praise and worship songs. Let's read our Bible and let's face our lions in the same way as what Daniel did. And let's stand up as a generation that says, we serve the living God. Thank you, guys. Thanks very much, parents, for this time. And I hope to chat to you again soon.